Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to the organizers, uh, especially uh, for the warming uh, welcome from uh, Lishwai. It is a pleasure to be here in this uh, uh, session, uh, rich uh, in terms of content and uh, also speakers. So um, it, it's, it is my honor to be here. My initial idea was to talk about generally about uh, how we uh, work with um, artificial intelligence and machine learning in our group uh, to address some of uh, the airline uh, problems, including uh, condition-based maintenance. But then when preparing this uh, talk, already by trying to uh, explain to, to, to you in the presentation about Remap, I figured out that it was already a, a lot. So I'll stick myself today to what we are doing Remap. So what I'm going to do today is to explain to you the uh, machine learning approach that we are following in this European project, a Remap that address uh, condition-based maintenance for uh, uh, aircraft. So the, the idea also where, where this starts is that the European uh, uh, Commission sees that uh, condition-based maintenance, so uh, replacements and uh, performance of maintenance based on monitoring the condition of the components will be part of the future. So according to ACAR, by 2035, condition-based maintenance philosophy will be accepted as a standard approach. And by 2050, all new aircraft will be designed to support this new philosophy. And with this in mind, we started the REMAP project. And uh, the REMAP project uh, started in 2018. We are currently in the last year of the project. Um, as uh, Lishua I mentioned, it's a 6.8 million uh, euros uh, uh, project uh, involving 13 partners, uh, in which uh, we at TU Delft, we are the, the coordinators. And uh, we are aiming to achieve TRL levels of uh, about uh, five, TRL five. What is the approach? Let me uh, share with you what is our approach. <clears throat> so we want to develop uh, an integrated fleet health management uh, solution. And to do that, we have four main pillars. Uh, the first one is about uh, an open uh, IT ecosystem. So solutions, uh, 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 algorithms um, can be uh, shared. Data can be communicated between uh, different elements uh, of the, the, the value chain. And there we do have the development of algorithms for structures. Uh, monitoring the health condition of structures, predicting the degradation of the health condition of uh, structural elements, and for systems. Uh, Data-driven algorithms for systems and sensing technology. We are also developing sensors uh, for uh, health monitoring of uh, structures because although uh, there's already many sensors on the aircraft for systems, there are barely any for uh, structures, so we are doing that in the lab, developing our own sensing technologies collecting our data in the lab, and then developing data-driven algorithms also for structures. And then we are using this information from the health monitoring, coming from sensors, uh, from, coming from uh, uh, systems and structures, into a uh, maintenance scaling tool. In there, we are also using a machine learning, so reinforcement learning, to cope with the high-dimensional space of solution to come up with the best solutions. This is what we call the integrated uh, fleet uh, health management solution. And also part of the project, we have uh, a safety risk assessment layer in which we are looking to all these aspects and seeing what is the impact in terms of uh, uh, safety when we adopt these type of solutions. We see this process as a circular process. So we have uh, sensors on, on the aircraft. This is particularly the case, as I said, for systems, uh, which generates data. The data is acquired, um, uh, once, especially once the aircraft lands, uh, is stored, is managed, uh, then we run diagnostics and prognostics algorithms uh, to then uh, feed the maintenance planning uh, and task uh, packaging uh, um, solutions, and then we execute maintenance, we assess what was the performance, and we continue doing this in a circular way so we can keep our fleet airworthy. I'm not going to explain all the details of what we are doing here. I'm going to um, focus uh, mainly in three parts the open IT ecosystem, some of the solutions that we are developing for the, the systems, health monitoring, and the scheduling uh, tool that we are developing. I'm happy to discuss other aspects uh, uh, afterwards. So let me focus on the uh, open IT ecosystem. I'll, I'll start by sharing with you what was our initial um, uh, vision when we wrote the proposal. So we thought about um, having uh, 
an uh, IT cloud service in which um, we'll have the data from multiple stakeholders because I figure out, okay, it will be many airlines using this service. The data from multiple stakeholders coming to the cloud, we'll have the service there, so our algorithms there, and we'll run the algorithms, produce results, and share this with the airline. Okay, that was our idea. Because since the beginning, we realized collaboration will be key. Okay, there is no extreme data for maintenance. Although we talk about terabytes of data being generated uh, when an aircraft flies, most of this data is not stored, it's not relevant, and it's not enough for us to, do, to run the prognostics. So we are not talking about a lot. There, there, there is few failures, luckily for us, uh, few failures uh, that we observe. So we need to extend to include also other airlines if you want to develop reliable uh, solutions. So that was our approach. Um, but then we feel, figure out that airlines were reluctant to share their data. Okay, so they would not be willing to send their data to a cloud service. Um, second, um, different airlines would require, when we start discussing with multiple airlines, they would require different levels of uh, uh, anonymization to be able to share the data, if they will be able to share the data. And this will create challenge also in terms of developing the algorithms. And there is also some data uh, traceability requirements or challenges, uh, because we will be talking about um, sensitive matters uh, in case of any uh, incident will occur uh, coming from uh, our decisions. So we changed from the, our first approach, that was this of collecting all the information in the cloud, all the data in the cloud, to have a distributed, a federated uh, approach. So the approach that we develop was a uh, hub and spoke approach in which we have the service in the hub, but the data stays in the uh, spokes. Okay, so the airline keeps the data on their side, and pretty much like you do with your mobile, when you want a service, when you want an app, you download the app which is stored in the cloud, you install in your server, you run with your data, the data stays in your computer if you, if you want, and then what we require is that this, the updated uh, uh, algorithm is shared, the information of the updated algorithm is shared so we can improve the algorithm that we have in the hub for the uh, other partners. So the data belongs to the operator, never leaves the, the IT servers. Uh, we we uh, distribute this parallel learning-based design Models and algorithms belong to the, the developers. It's also open I, uh, API. That's one of the changes that, or the difference that we have from other solutions that we perhaps can uh, uh, see in the market. So any developer can jump in and use uh, the IT uh, uh, ecosystem to create new solutions and uh, eventually promote the solutions next to airlines. Uh, focus on security and audit and easily adaptable to develop different machine learning uh, techniques. So this is, this is the IT um, ecosystem that we uh, created, we generated, and we are currently testing at uh, KLM, one of our partners, at KLM uh, uh, facilities. We had the idea of having more airlines. Unfortunately, COVID didn't help with that because we couldn't get attention from other airlines to join our project in the middle of the COVID uh, uh, crisis. But the infrastructure is there to have other airlines uh, joining. Let me now jump to the systems uh, uh, prognostics, uh, our PHM challenge. We have uh, many, um, let me see, yeah, it's running. We have many uh, partners uh, joining our effort in developing PHM solutions uh, for uh, uh, aircraft systems. We are looking at 10 different systems from two different fleets. Uh, our partner, KLM, uh, they have uh, a Boeing, mainly Boeing fleet, so we do have, uh, we are focusing some systems from the Dreamliner 787 and uh, one system from the 737. Uh, and we do have many, um, as I said, many partners developing different uh, solutions uh, there from, uh, um, 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 from um, uh, convolution and error networks uh, to uh, um, support vector uh, machine solutions. Or in this case, what we are seeing here is was a solution developed by the colleagues from uh, Collins Aerospace in which they develop uh, uh, an unsupervised uh, recurrent narrow network to try to look into 2D uh, space degradation of uh, the health condition of uh, uh, systems. And what we are seeing on the left 
uh, graph is, I don't know if it's going to go back, can it go back, yeah, is the, the, the data coming from the systems being processed and displayed uh, according to normalized sensor values. This is then transformed into a, a 2D representation and which, where you can see in the yellow part is the health uh, uh, situation. And then we have trained and pre-identified two type of failures uh, on the two uh, sides here, the red ones. And then by tracing the, the evolution of the degradation, we can then figure out not only the fact that the health index is decreasing, so there is a, a eventually a degradation, a failure coming, but also in the case of multiple uh, uh, type of failures, trying to identify which failure mode we are observing from, from the data. This has been, uh, as I said, developed by colleagues from Collins Aerospace and presented in uh, the paper uh, here uh, below. Okay, so in this case, we are seeing that uh, we are go to moving towards uh, failure type one, which was here in the top, so we can identify this as being the, the failure. This has been developed for uh, four, um, sorry, uh, in the case that it was not working, I had the, the video, I had a few slides. Um, um, the, I was saying this, this was developed for four systems from the, the Boeing 787, the systems developed by Collins Aerospace themselves. Uh, the results from those systems, uh, unfortunately, I cannot share with you, but the colleagues from Collins Aerospace also made an effort to also use the uh, CMAPS data to see the, how it will work directly using their method. Uh, the performance were roughly uh, okay, good, so we can see for the training test of uh, uh, training tests 01 and 03, they could identify all failures, uh, including the 03, and they have two different types of uh, failure modes, so you could identify all for the training test. For the tests, the percentage here are low, uh, although uh, in terms of health degradation, it was already below 75% for most of the cases, but here you see low because uh, it was not always possible to identify what was the failure uh, type. That was uh, why uh, we got uh, lower scores here. But uh, important to see is that when we identify the failure, we were still a few cycles away of really the failure taking place, so giving time to um, have an intervention. We, as I said, we look into many other systems. Uh, one, for instance, is the bleed the hair uh, system, uh, which uh, is composed by multiple subsystems. So, uh, for instance, also at Tilde, have to look into a random forest uh, type of techniques to uh, uh, try to predict the failure from all the multiple su subsystems in which failures uh, uh, was, were identified in the past to try to come up with a, um, a good remaining useful life uh, prognostics. Um, and the res results were again, again fairly good. This is real data, was trained in real data coming from uh, systems from uh, KLM. So we have uh, an, an error of uh, around, f um, or a, a mean absolute error of around 43 days, which is not bad when we th uh, know that um, the mean time to failure in these systems is about 500 uh, uh, days to 600 days. There were also some colleagues, uh, for instance, from the University of Coimbra that looked not only to develop these models, but also to make this visible. So one of the challenges that we see in implementing condition-based maintenance in practice is it's hard for um, uh, controllers, planners to um, understand this information and to see how they can take this into uh, practice. So they develop uh, some visualization tools that uh, for the multiple systems from a given aircraft can uh, um, display all the information about what, what are the intervals expected for a failure to happen so um, tasks could be um, uh, clustered together for a maintenance uh, intervention. The other uh, third aspect that I would like to highlight here is uh, regarding the, the scheduling uh, of these uh, tasks. So um, we have, uh, well, scheduling of maintenance tasks in general, but particular uh, uh, PHM tasks. So we, in the, the REMAP project, we mainly focus on the, um, uh, scheduling, uh, kind of last minute scheduling or last day scheduling. So we look into mainly the time horizon of the next uh, um, 12 days, next, um, 30 days ahead of us and try to readapt the schedule based on the disruptions and new observations that we have. So we, uh, within this IT ecosystem, we set up the, the, the flow of information going from the prognostics models uh, that we saw in the previous slides, uh, information about maintenance slots, costs, and then what we uh, created uh, was a, a, a prognostics-based task uh, generator. This is uh, based on a partial observable Monte Carlo decision process in which we go from 
um, uh, stochastic information coming from the, the, the prognostics model into a belief state of what is the current condition of each one of the components of the aircraft. And if we have this belief state based on opportunities that we have to make maintenance in the future and the cost that that's, that incurs, uh, also the cost of uh, let it fail, and then what, what does it mean? Well, then we could create an information about what are the recommended dates and costs. And putting all these together, including the disruptions, uh, so the disruptions in terms of maintenance slots, uh, resources, and flight scale, we can have then uh, a decision support tool that can, uh, uh, in a matter of seconds, react to new information and readjust, uh, readjust the, the maintenance plans. We have developed uh, um, uh, a simple linear program, simple meaning linear programming approach to do this, uh, but um, uh, when extending to uh, prognostic models, we had to extend this to our reinforcement learning, so a, a deep uh, 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 QN uh, network to uh, model an agent to deal with all this information coming from multiple uh, aircraft. And that's exactly the challenge that we have in hand. So uh, if we are talking about a couple of systems from a, a fleet of aircraft, maybe a, a human can deal with that and, and, and cope with uh, ch uh, scaling those tasks. But when we are talking about a fleet of uh, 30, 40, 50 aircraft, each one of them with the 70, 80 systems being monitored, uh, it's hard to um, process all this information and come with efficient plans. So we have the information from multiple components from the, the fleet. Uh, as I said, we use a partial observable Monte Carlo decision uh, uh, process to create a belief state of what is the health condition of each system and so of each aircraft in the fleet. And then we use a deep queue learning uh, network uh, using information from the slots, the, the resources and the costs to come up with an adapti adaptive plan. Um, we are currently running with the prognostics. Uh, with, I still, I was hoping to show you your results already with prognostics tasks. It's not yet there. Uh, so, but I have here the results that we ob obtain without the uh, prognostic uh, tasks. And we already observed that by just optimizing this process and making this op uh, process continuous and automatic, automatic we could save uh, already uh, about 90% of the uh, ground time uh, that we were observing. So what you have to pay attention here is the orange bar, which is the current, uh, well, what was observed by KLM uh, performance, and the light blue one, which is the reference model that we are uh, seeing here. So the ground time was reduced by 90%, which is about one day per year that we are saving in our, in our fleet. And also what, uh, there, is, there are some do tasks you can observe here. So I know uh, uh, this is half a year simulation. There were five tasks that we could not schedule uh, without causing disruption. It's not too, too bad because actually this always happens. The, the human then just easily uh, puts this in alignment and so tries to uh, cope with uh, an extended anger maintenance. There were none from the airline schedule because this is already a result of the human yeah, making his or her intervention to make this uh, to avoid that this happens. So this is is not seen as as a, as a major problem. But more important for the airline was what you were seeing here, which is uh, the the changes in the schedule. So uh, in the day of oper of, of the, the operation, we reduced by 50% the needs uh, to change the need to change the schedule, and 60% uh, the day before, and 27% uh, uh, two days before. So reducing the the need to change the schedule uh, the, before we have the, the, the operations. Okay, and, um, and with this I'd like to conclude, um, I, have, I could talk about many other aspects that we are developed in the, in the projects, uh, but uh, the time does not allow that. Uh, but I'd like to uh, thank the partners that are, uh, have been uh, contributing to this. So this is uh, the list of partners. And I'd like to share with you some of uh, the, the conclusions or observations that we are having uh, from this project. Um, the first one is that there is yet not extreme data uh, for maintenance. This is something that will come in the future, uh, especially if we talk about data that is valuable, uh, has value for us to train reliable uh, models. And we need to share knowledge. Uh, the open IT ecosystem allows um, multi -stakeholders, multiple stakeholders to join this effort and uh, uh, support this development of condition-based maintenance. But um, we need 
um, also uh, to have uh, airlines willing to uh, join this effort. And one of the things that we see here is the opportunity to uh, use, for instance, uh, federated analytics as part of the solution for condition-based maintenance. There is a, a, also a current challenge, challenge that the sensors are located in the aircraft, they are not there yet for health monitoring, so cause a problem in the value that we are extracting from these uh, sensors. So uh, manufacturers have to be more aware of these, and I think they are already more aware of these. So in the future, we can have more uh, um, better information coming from these sensors. And there is a problem here is that in the beginning we wanted to address critical systems and replace interval-based maintenance with our approach. The problem that we uh, rapidly observe is that these critical systems, they don't fail. So they are, um, uh, it's, it's, it's preventive maintenance, they are replaced before they fail, so there is no data to train our model. So we had to look into uh, non-critical systems in which uh, reactive maintenance is also possible. So there needs to be uh, training of these algorithms recurring, uh, um, going to uh, lab experiments um, before we uh, adopt uh, condition-based maintenance also for these uh, critical systems. Um, we need to move from prognostics to uh, scaling and decision support tool, which is something that we are not uh, still observing uh, in, in practice. And, um, and there is a new paradigm required in terms of uh, um, artificial intelligence in, in, in aviation, in terms of regulations, in terms of practice, because condition-based maintenance and uh, machine learning will be part of the future of aviation. We need to move uh, towards that uh, direction. And um, to really conclude, we'll have on the 23rd of May, a final remap day, which you can attend online. And also, if you are interested in condition-based maintenance, we are organizing a conference in the two following days, in which we will be discussing some of our solutions and also solutions proposed by other partners in Delft uh, in this international conference for CVM in aerospace. And with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much for your attention. questions for you. Uh, maybe either, maybe it would be good to see any interest from the audience first. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the talk. Um, with this open uh, IT sort of environment, you seem to solve the problem of gathering data from an airline, but you don't, can you solve the problem of combining this data if you, maybe you want to train an algorithm using data from different Airlines, you can't do that with this, or can you? No, we don't mix uh, data from multiple uh, airlines. Um, <clears throat> so the data, as I said, stays at the, 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 uh, at the spoke, so at the infrastructure of the, the airline. What we need, so where we are currently, as I said, testing only with uh, KLM, but our, the way that we envisage it in the future is that to be part of this environment, you'll have to um, um, share uh, part, uh, a sample of data, you as an airline, as a user. And this will be in the hub to train algorithms, um, but um, not a rich uh, data set that you can use for multiple airlines to develop and train algorithms. Okay, see so, yeah. thanks. Uh, I think one of the last remarks I found really remarkable in the sense that you've mentioned that you are not able, for example, to wait until certain parts really crash on the aircraft. What is currently uh, sort of the scope in the sense, what part of the parts you are able to predict really to fail fairly accurately? And what would be really the potential for you if we would be able really to unravel it fully? If uh, the last part, sorry? The first one, what is the, the percentage of the parts that we can predict the, the maintenance or the failure right now? And the second one, how much it could be more if we would have more of the data, better sensors? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. That's a good question. Uh, thanks. Um, so we are looking into, into as I said, uh, non-critical systems. We are looking into um, cabin uh, air systems, uh, cooling systems, so uh, things that if they fail, they don't represent a, a, represent a security or a safety, sorry, a safety uh, issue to the, 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 the airline, to the aircraft uh, awareness. Uh, and those we observe failures uh, in the data, and those we can uh, uh, address. We are talking about, I don't know exactly the number, but I think it will be about 10% of the systems that we have in aircraft, no more than that.
But there is there is more than that aspect of uh, can we do it or not? Because there will be even even the, the critical ones if you if you monitor them and if you have let's say lab data that can allow you to develop, or if you move towards hybrid solutions, that's uh, perhaps part of the, the solution, which you have physics models that can help you to calibrate some um, um, data-driven models to help you with the, with the prognostics. There is also the economic value. So some systems, it's just better to let them fail. The effort that you put there into develop a prognostics algorithm, the um, lack of accuracy sometimes that you observe, which is inherent to these models, um, doesn't make worth to invest in a, a, a PHM or CBM approach. So this has to be considered from the perspective of the, the airline and from the perspective of the developers, where uh, are the systems that have uh, 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 an economic benefit for investing in developing these type of solutions. And this is something that we are doing together with some of our partners in the REMAP project. Uh, but it will depend also from airline to airline and uh, fleet to fleet. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, the effort is mainly from the, the IT uh, side, so um, there needs to uh, uh, be installed a, con a connection between our hub uh, of the IT uh, uh, system to their servers. The data has to be linked to this connector, uh, and once this is done, it should be feasible to just use the solutions that we currently have in the hub and to run and test it in their own uh, servers. Mm -hmm. Wait, we can be talking about one week of investment in terms of having two or three people working on installing these together with, uh, with our team. And then uh, you would require also the people who understand these models from the airline to be involved to go, you know, if I go a step further and see the decision making, I say this huge complexity when it comes to actual operations yeah. and implementing it with not just your maintenance team, but yeah. with a lot of other players out there. I wonder, yeah, what is the experience from KLM with that? taking this idea and actually bringing it to the Yeah, so uh, you, you need to have the right people there indeed. Okay. So you don't, you don't need to have the, the people that really understand uh, the algorithms themselves, mm -hmm. but need to understand what we are talking about. So uh, uh, in some way, when we move from interval-based maintenance, in which it's very tangible, it's um, 700 flight hours and 300 cycles, it, it's very obvious, tangible, what is that? And then we look to probabilities of failure. It's, it's, a, it's a different game. So the, the, the people that have to read this and do something with this information have to understand what this means. So uh, indeed, from the airline side or MRO service provider side, there needs to be people that understand what this means to make the best out of this. Of course, we are making an effort also to have this uh, user interface and, uh, um, and the decision support tool with a, with a shell can help the decision maker, but in the end, uh, the, the user has to understand what this, 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 this means. Yeah. It's time to finish. Uh, okay, that's what Manuel is saying. Time? Yeah. Well, I have two minutes. <laughs> okay. Then I have a question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you talked about failures and you detect failures, right? So, what if if you have failures which you have haven't trained? So, is the failure doing its job? Yes. New failures, I mean. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that depends on the situation. Most likely, you won't get get those failures because they were the the algorithms were not trained for that. Um, which is actually something I can share with you, which is also a challenge that we face. So we were uh, looking at one of the systems uh, from uh, the, the 787, which had on average three failures observed per year per aircraft, and it was rich data set. We uh, spent uh, one year developing uh, one, um, one algorithm, and then suddenly uh, Boeing also observing the same fact. Uh, they correct uh, the system, there, there was an update and we had to adjust the models and now we don't have such good performance because they don't fail so much. Uh, so you have to retrain it. Um, so um, if you are lucky, if the same failure process is still there, you can still reuse uh, what you have tra uh, you done before. But if, if uh, the, the failure pro process changes, so you have to restart from, uh, from zero. So um, one of the things that we are also doing in, the, in um, 
uh, to the LFTs to have a, a, a general framework in which you go from uh, data to this to um, select what are the relevant features from a, a pool of uh, algorithms to select what is the best algorithm for that uh, type of data and then to train the algorithm and produce results. It's not as good as if you make it tailored uh, based, but we hope that will help people that are, don't want to invest so much time in developing these type of systems that can have a kind of uh, um, fits all solution to help to uh, overcome these type of situations in a much faster way. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.